Now in uh, in bricket in bricketing, we do use a number of uh, uh, waste uh, raw materials or waste biomass materials. This is sawdust. It's one of the materials we do use in producing briquettes. Now this material has to undergo um, certain uh, processes, uh, that is pyrolysis. It is first dried up and then pyrolyzed um, using our, our green carbonizing unit to obtain fine, fine char. We call it fine pyro char. Okay, actually it is fine charcoal. And then we use, we mix it with binders, we mix it with uh, other, other stuff to produce briquettes. Now, in most cases, we do not use uh, just uh, uh, um, uh, sawdust alone. We do use these other materials. We have, like you can see here, there's grass. This is this is these are not weeds for us this is not weeds these are feedstock for briquetting like now we are nurturing them to reach a certain size and then we cut them okay once we cut them we dry them ready for carbonize carbonization they get carbonized and they go for briquet making now behind there, behind this shrub here, or behind this grass, you can see there are some other raw materials there. This is cow dung, which again we do, we give it some treatment, and it's another material we use. Now there is another material there, which is again um, a cow dung mixed with other stuff. It again goes in for a briquetting. Once it has been treated, it is given a certain treatment. You can see there. Once we have these materials, we can carbonize them as a cocktail of feedstocks to obtain a mixture. Remember, these are not the only raw materials used. We use other form of cut grass, we use straw, or we use kitchen waste. We can dry them up. All sorts of uh, waste biomass can make this kind of uh, stuff. This is another raw material. This is uh, red soil. Or sometimes we can have clay. It's another raw material. Right? Now many more raw materials are being used. We do carbonize a number of raw materials. Now, currently, what the two gentlemen are doing here is to load our carbonizing unit or pyrolyzer with uh, waste paper. At this juncture, we are using waste paper. So they load it and then, uh, of course, they light it and they cook it. Um, or put the lid and the carbonization stage starts off. So this is one of the raw materials again, which I never mentioned earlier. We use waste paper and any sort of waste biomass can be turned. On the other side, you can see there is waste grass, which already we have cut and is being dried up, ready. When it is dry, it will be ready for carbonization process now the our carbonizing unit if you can focus on this our carbonizing unit is um, a carbonizing unit where um, there's no waste which comes out everything is a product you can see um, the carbonizing unit has a door or a window where we get our carbonized material once the process is through. It has a lid. You remove the lid. You put in your waste biomass. And then you cook the system. Okay? Now, this carbonizing unit, normally, there is no... There is no smoke emission to the environment. The smoke 
is trapped here into water okay the smoke is trapped into water now remember in other words once we are biolizing or once we are converting our waste biomass into uh, biochar or fine charcoal we don't lose anything into the atmosphere or into the environment the smoke is trapped there then your biochar is here you get it you make your briquettes okay now the smoke trapped on the other side or the smoky material trapped um, it is a product it's a raw material for other products we do uh, generate two products from there one of it is soap and uh, the other of it is fertilizer we do make our fertilizer from that waste smoke this is an, an, a new uh, kind of uh, 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 product uh, which is coming up because our fertilizer now is got a, a lot of carbon in it okay it has a lot of carbon in it so we don't lose anything into the environment everything becomes a raw material this like the carbonized you know the, the biogen is for making briquettes and then our sm trapped smoke or the smoke solution it goes in to make more other products from there so here we obtain um, raw materials so we don't have any waste from there you can see having such a kind of unit is one way of cleaning up the environment of solid wastes in form of biomass remember waste biomass is uh, one single most uh, uh, you know waste which uh, makes the environment unhabitable in most cases now assume now we've gotten our our biochar this is now biochar from waste paper now this is you can see this is now fine fine carbon it is fine this is fine carbon you can imagine you can see <laughs> this is fine carbon these are very good uh, you know this is biochar that's what we call biochar and it's ready uh, to be mixed with a binder and other ingredients densifiers and all the other, other, st other stuff to make what we term as um, the briquetting mixture like what this uh, gentleman is doing here mr badala uh, is mixing all is mixing the biogia with other binder materials um, to create what we term as the briquetting mixture already now um like now you know in most cases we can um, we, we may do pepper pepper jar alone we may do soda alone we may do a cocktail okay because once you have you're biolized or once you have uh, made your bio jar you 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 can now mix with other binders we have this like now the mixture he has here already it has some uh, um densifiers because the briquette has to to have some some mass because remember the biogia is so light and uh, okay the densifiers are normally inert materials they don't add uh, uh, you know they, they don't combust but theirs they do two things one is to add or to increase the density for the briquette two is to lengthen the combustion period they retain the heat so the the the, the, no, the um the briquette can burn or combust for like three and a half to four and a half hours you see due to courtesy of those kind of materials that we have added but remember there is a binder also in there okay now this material is ready with that kind of homogenization, you know, you have to ensure that it is well homogenized. Now it is ready for briquetting, right? Now um, Mr. Abdara is taking it for uh, to the briquetting machine. So now here we are. Now this is our production area or our briquetting area. Now um, this is our briquetting machine. So sorry before that. This is our briquetting machine. 
and this is the, the table where they receive the, the, the molded briquette. You see? Now uh, one person stands on the other side to be cutting off and arranging those briquettes on the tables. Okay? You can see now these are briquettes which have been made a while ago, like one hour ago, I guess. Um, you can see how smooth they are. They are, you know, they are appearing like uh, you know small pieces of wood cut at a given you know, length. Remember? Now, uh, of course, let, let, let's see the process, how it takes place. Now, of course, that is the hopper, and this is the screw, and this is the outlet. So the materials are taken into the screw, uh, of course, and extruded out through that small outlet. Okay? Below it, there is a, what we term as uh, a motor. Now you can see the materials are coming out. It's, it's doing that because sometimes the material, once it is clogged, eh, you need to do that to push out the materials. Yeah. Yeah, you can see how the materials are coming out. Sometimes if, if there is a lot of water in our mixture, it comes out not so nice, not so smooth. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now this system can produce 165 uh, kilos per day. We produce around 165 kilos per day. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can see it's uh, trying to cut them into various sizes. But if you so wish, it can go a long way. Um, is arranging them in uh, some small tray and take them to arrange them somewhere. Okay. Now, the capacity of the motor or of this machine, this is a 7.5 horsepower. It's a 7.5 horsepower machine. So, So you can see the, the, the production is pretty quick and sometimes it is an enjoyable exercise to, to do it. Eh? It's pretty quick. Now you can see how you know how fast the the waste raw materials can be turned into into, into, into products. This is a this is a green energy. Okay? It is a green energy in action. So sometimes this kind of briquettes can be used as firewood depending on the size. Like you can cut them into you know longer sizes and they become as firewood. You can cut them into smaller sizes, they act as charcoal. Okay. The rate of combustion of this briquette is very nice. Right? So um, now once they have come from that joint or from the briquetting machine, they are arranged here. Now at this point, they are allowed to cure for two hours to harden, okay? Once they are hardened, now they can be moved either to the, to, to the dryer, there's a briquetted dryer, or they are dried under sunshine, okay? Why they, you know, we leave it to cure is to allow them Harden, okay, which at least I've, I've mentioned uh, earlier. But now you remember, I said once you know you can see there are so many briquettes here which are already hardened and their room was drying up. It's because of the rainy season. Um, we have not been having enough sunshine. It's, uh, there has been a lot of rain, so in that manner, you cannot take them out. And already our bricket, you know, bricket dryer, the bricket dryer is, is filled up to capacity. So this one have to dry here 
until we have space on the other side to the dryer unit the dryer unit normally takes it normally takes um, it normally takes uh, uh, three days for the briquette to dry completely ready for use because that is an nasty and kind of uh, a drying process because of uh, the greenhouse uh, effect the greenhouse gas you know the greenhouse don't the greenhouse effect now you can see in the dryer we have what we done as uh, you know like uh, beds we have two beds one on this side and another on the other side so you can see briquettes are arranged on those the briquettes are arranged to extend the drying process you can see here it's already dry you know there's a given moisture content normally which is acceptable around 9 to 12 percent moisture content so it is dried to that particular level of moisture content and already you can see how they arrange the the briquettes yeah, now you can see like this bricket is already dried up is ready for use uh, it is dried to the right moisture content and uh, it is now ready to be packaged into sacks.